Welcome to the sideline, the Rugby Rambo edition. My name is Dokas Mundua. Good to have you back for yet another episode of the Rugby Rambo where we're going to discuss all things rugby, in-depth conversations, rugby, and all it is that's happening around the world of rugby. Uh, my name is Dokas Mundua. With me in studio, I have a few guests and my fellow panelists. Um, with me to Joe, I have a panelist, Joseph Mani. Um, hello, everyone, and welcome back to the Rugby Rambo show right here on the sideline. I am Joseph Man Mumza, and I shall forever remind everyone that I'm an Olympus fan. <laughs> nice reminder. We appreciate that. We also have a very special <laughs> guest in studio today. Uh, hello, everyone. My name is uh, Charlotte Trizamudola, a uh, rugby player and a uh, proud Black Pals player. <laughs> I know it seems we're here yeah. name dropping our team, so I have to, I have to make sure I also name drop mine. Uh, Black Pals Strong, the best female team in Uganda. She can, as we can see, she even wore the jersey, just in case you forget along the show. Eh? Yeah. You just look at her jersey and you realize yeah. that, yeah, we have Black Pals in the house. Good to have you with us, Charlotte. Thank it's you. really nice to have you with us on set. Um, as we get into the show, uh, we are having the Challenger Series going on at the moment, yes. And this is the second set of the Challenger series in Montevideo. And Uganda started really strong this time, yeah? Um, it has been amazing with the way the performance has been. The ladies won both their matches. The gentlemen won both their matches. I think the gentlemen in this case is the highlight. Mm. Because we had the game against Germany yesterday at 9 p.m. And Uganda beat uh, Germany 17, 14, yeah? It was 19? Yes. No, it was 17. It was actually 17. Yeah. Mm. And I think that was quite the mm. headline of the start off for Uganda at the Montevideo Games. Because this is usually that, um, it's that fixture that always has us mm. sitting on the edge of, of um, our seats. Um, Joseph, you watch the games? Yes, I indeed. Us a bit. <laughs> indeed, I watched the games. And uh, before we came on set, we were discussing how, yes, we were discussing how uh, Uganda has taken a while without beating Germany and now we met them and we have beaten them 17-14 with that pious Ogena try at the end after the Huta. I think uh, we now have them. Yeah, I, I, it's safe to say that um, mm. what we thought was the Germany scare seems out of the way now. Yes. And then also the ladies starting off with both wins. That was big. That was really big. At least now I can say we've set We've set a stage. Eh? Somehow we know we're moving forward strong. Our next fixtures is going to be um, Uganda and Argentina. That's for the ladies. It's today at 5.37 p.m. our time. Then the gents are playing PNG. And um, maybe you could share with us a bit what you expect from the fixtures ahead based off the fact that we started quite strong at this with the start of the, um, the series. Um. Uh, a player like Charlotte has been at this stage before. Charlotte, you know what it means to have <laughs> two wins out of your first three games. That uh, automatically, in most cases, uh, lifts you uh, to that uh, quarterfinal stage. So uh, maybe you can tell us what does it mean to win two games on the first day, then secure that third win if at all it comes. If it doesn't, you're still safe. Um, so I'll start with the men. I think the men had their two hardest because they were in a very difficult pool. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, Uruguay it has been on the series before. Mm -hmm. Then you have Germany, uh, Achilles. But this time we, we <laughs> actually we actually it was a, it, we actually put them down and show mm -hmm. them who's boss. And the fact I think the boys decide to come down and focus and realize it's just any other team. Uh, now against Papua New Guinea, I think they're going in with confidence, mm -hmm. but I think also they are still focused. I think this time round, because they messed up the first time round, and their only chance is they have to win this uh, this uh, second uh, uh, Challenger Series. And for the ladies, well, I saw their group and I knew they were going to actually beat Thailand and Mexico. Our hardest game will be against Argentina, mm -hmm. but uh, right now the positions they are in, they're already through to the quarterfinal. So we just hope uh, the team that we get, mm -hmm. we actually make it to the semis because the ladies are in a better position. Mm -hmm. But so far, so good, and we are proud of what they are doing. So. This was such a strong start. Mm -hmm. I mean, for anyone who was watching this, like, it was a good way to get into the weekend. Eh? Yeah, this was a good start to the weekend. Um, like I've said, we have, the, we have a special guest in studio. That's Charlotte Mudola. And um, 
the goal of having Charlotte with us in studio is to learn more about Charlotte's journey with rugby as we celebrate the Women's Month. Happy Women's Day to the lady viewers out there. It's a day late, but we're with you always. We're happy to celebrate the ladies, and in a special way, we would like to celebrate the ladies in rugby. And what better way than to have one of the pioneers of ladies' rugby in Uganda with us on the show to talk to us about her journey. So Charlotte, rugby, why? Why rugby? You know, for me, the first time I watched rugby, I was young. I was about, I, I think, I started watching rugby when I was my daughter's age, about two, three years. Mm. And that's when I, well, so you can have vague memories mm. of the sport. But from an early stage, I knew well enough I didn't want to play this because I seen people bleeding, I seen people crying. <laughs> so I was that little. And <laughs> as I grew up, it stayed in my head. I was like, I'll do mm. everything rugby. I'll get into rugby administration. I'll do rugby media. I will be a fan. I will yeah. shout the loudest. But to put your body on the line, why rugby? Um, actually, it's the funny thing is rugby wasn't even my favorite sport at the time. Uh, it was actually, actually hated rugby. Uh -huh. Because, uh, yeah, because, because my brothers used to would bully me to watch rugby on Saturdays. Mm -hmm. You know, if I want to watch something, you know, you have one TV. But every Saturday they would have to watch games, international games. So they would bully me off the TV, like stop me from watching what I want, and I would watch rugby by force. So you're seated in the chair sulking, you're watching, but you, you get. So basically I learned rugby by force. It wasn't intentional. And then uh, when I went to Vienna College for A-level, I think, I don't know if you know Martin Karugonjo? Yes. yes. At that time, he was going to be the best center we had. So we were in school together, we were classmates. And then he, he said, but yeah, Mudola, you have two amazing brothers who play rugby. There's no way you have no idea how to play. Because in school, I would always be on the basketball court, volleyball court, playing soccer. So that's when he told me, you come and try out playing rugby with us. Okay, so when did you start rugby? Um, Take us through your journey briefly. I started, you started. Yeah, so that's, I, I started in school actually. When I was still in school okay. with uh, Martin Karugonjo, with the boys. I just got the rugby ball and everything just happened automatically. They didn't have to teach me much because I had been watching throughout mm -hmm. the years, throughout the years, you know, being the youngest. So in S6 back, uh, I was actually supposed to go play volleyball. For my Essex back, because I was actually volleyball, a real volleyball player. That's such a well shift, shift yeah. I know, From yeah. Volleyball <laughs> to rugby, that's a very <laughs> well shift. I know. So, of course, Timothy, of course, you know, when you look up to your brother, Timothy, we're always tight, like we're thick as thieves. He was like, ah, there's a rugby team at Chadondo, and there's a lady called Helen. You go to Chadondo, just try and ask and tell them, uh, your Timothy's sister, you want to try out rugby. Mm -hmm. So in my head, I was like, well, let me try. Let me go and see what it's like before I actually went for the volleyball practice. So I went to Chadondo, and then I phoned Helen. Because actually, correction, Helen, uh, Helen, uh, Anne, Alan Sizomo, and Rebecca are the ones who actually started women's rugby. So I actually phoned it there. So uh -huh. I go find Helen. So I which meet. Year is this that you uh, it was in 2003. Okay. Yeah. I was so close to the five years old. Yeah. I yeah. Then was still a baby. Yeah. Baby. Yeah. yeah. So we found. I found Helen and uh, our coach Jim Park. May go. He passed away. May God rest his soul. And then when I met Helen the first time, I said playing, and I was like, wow, this game is actually interesting. You know, the contact, the physicality, uh, like it keeps you on your toes all the time, but also the discipline. So my first training session, I was like, ah, I think I'll go back. I kept going back, I kept going back, and, and I was like, like volleyball. volleyball. <laughs> I was like, you know what? I think I've found my sport. I think I've found my love. And since then, I've never looked back, and I'm still playing up to now. Okay. Um, Joined in 2003, that means you were part of the Randy team that played yes. in the very first international yes. game. Uh, so you have such a good history with the, with the sport. Take us through that, your journey when you played the first international game. Um, Ideally, I meant to understand that Rwanda had been had had rugby slightly longer than Uganda yeah. at that point, yeah. and yet when you went, you upset them so bad. Yeah, um, I think uh, the fact is before would actually play. You know, it was just Thunderbirds, and would have Thunderbirds, a Thunderbirds. Those are the games we would play all the time, and all the time. Just one, one year. Yeah. So every weekend they just swap and mix us up, mix us up. So when we got the chance to play Rwanda, you know the excitement were like, yeah. And, but the good thing, our team was full of, like, who were actually sporty, fast. And were, of course, small, tiny, tiny girls. Like, I wish you could see us at that time. <laughs> and you could see pictures of Helen, how skinny she was. But um, we also had Christine, I think, you know, Christine. Uh, yes. Uh, Rosenberg. 
Winnie, so all those guys were in that same team. Uh, it was just, an, uh, we were just excited that actually we're going to play another team besides ourselves. And we're like focused. And we had the best coach who taught us the basics from like beginning. So we had all the basics right. Mm -hmm. So I think Randa didn't see us coming. Because when we went on pitch, we just rained tries on them because they just realized, oh my God, this. And we had a destroyer in Christine Chizito. Mm. So she would just fend off everyone. Like whoever comes to tackle, they just bounce off. And then you just offload the ball to Helen because at that time I was a wing. And then Charlotte try. Rachel Kakairo, you know Rachel? Yes. yes. Yeah. So it was, it was exciting and fun. And then that's when actually Ugandan rugby actually picked up internationally. And now Kenya was also interested in playing, I guess. So I've picked up something from what you're saying. You started as one team, Thunderbirds, and to have opposition, you divided Thunderbirds into two. So how would, would you like to take us through how you got to Black Pals? Because by the time you get to the existence of Black Pals, I feel like there's so much somewhere there in the middle that you could share with us and let us get enlightened on. Um, basically, okay, uh, of course, and then all these teams that are being formed, Helen is, was part of the, the whole formation. Uh, so it was Thunderbirds, then uh, we broke, we created, Thund uh, we created Rangers, but it was based at Chadondo. So Rangers were like a second team to Thunderbirds. But then uh, Chadondo couldn't uh, maintain having two teams at that time, two mm -hmm. women's teams. Uh, so we stayed a while at uh, Chadondo with uh, Thunderbirds and Rangers. Then Helen again went to Legends and uh, they started Panthers. So when they said uh, we can't handle, we can't have rain two teams at Chadondo, it's strictly Thunderbirds. A few of us crossed to <coughs> Legends to join and uh, to continue with Panthers. Interesting. In which year is this? Because Panthers <laughs> seems to be that new child, that new girl's child no, on block. It, no, at the um, moment, it's a team that we haven't had so much of over the past years. So hearing that Panthers is something that came back yeah. along, this is, this is a bit surprising for us. Money, you knew there was Panthers back in the day as early as 2003, 2004. No, no I didn't know them from that earlier. <laughs> no, it was in, I think, 2012, 13, around there. Wow, but yeah, so but then in recent in, in recent history, our Panthers has been having that start stop go start yeah, sort yeah. of thing, and then they have been playing the sevens and they have been away from the fifteens. Ah, yeah, but yeah, yeah they are now back. So, so, so best because the uh, legends couldn't maintain a women's team, so, so we lost a couple of girls in Panthers. So, so three of us at that time. Now Helen had moved to Ginger and created the uh, Walukuba Walukuba Titans or something Walukuba Trojans. No. Then, which later became Ginger Tear Gas. Okay. Ah, yeah, I've heard of that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, the Ginger Tear Gas. Then uh, she realized, she was like, okay, because at that time, okay, I would actually go to Legends, hoping Panthers would stay and hoping girls would keep coming. So I would stay and train with the boys, the boys' teams, hoping that if at least the, boy, the girls see that someone, there's a lady training at Legends, they would actually come back and, uh, and would get support from any of the boys' teams. But at that time, the men's teams were not interested in a ladies' team. So Helen was like, why don't you come? We create a team like you. So it was me, Adon, Susan, you know, Adon, Susan, and Peace Mirembe were the only surviving uh, Panthers players. Mm -hmm. There was Claire and Nina, but she crossed to Thunderbirds. Then there was um, those, so the three of us, actually Helen asked, if you're interested, we can create a team, join with the Ginger Girls and then you, and then we start afresh a team. And then with the guidance of uh, George Mbalu and Foxy, they were interested, they were like, why don't we have a women's team at Pirates? That and that's was the birth of the black pals. Yeah, that was the birth. Then black pals came in with the Emilys, Aumas, and we started slowly. And that's how. It's interesting how much resilience you had because for a period of time when you yeah. had no ladies on the team, you were willing to keep training with the boys' teams, yeah. hoping. Eh? Yeah. I would say you're one of the people that have pushed the existence of yeah. women's rugby to stay to that point. Yeah. Um, so take us through your journey with the international stage. <laughs> Where to start? Um, okay, basically, briefly, I'll just. Uh, of course, at some point, we would play uh, sevens. Actually, we were not playing fifteens that much. Actually, Uganda would only play sevens against Kenya. So we would do Kabebere sevens, a lot of Kabebere sevens. So we would do cross border uh, tournaments with Kenya. And then also, Uganda hosted a couple of Africa rugby sevens. Actually, with the first uh, Africa sevens. 
uh, we Women's Africa Sevens, most the first, I think, three or two, it was Uganda hosting. Mm -hmm. And that's when we actually hosted in 2008. They were, that's when you hosted 2008 for the World Cup qualifiers. And that's when we actually qualified to play uh, in the first ever International Women's World Cup in Dubai in 2009. Of course, we played some games in Tunisia. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Tunisia, we did play Tunisia and we actually won a couple of team, uh, we, a couple of games against Tunisia, Kenya. We actually rivals for a while, but <laughs> so um, and that's when we qualified for mm -hmm. the World Cup in 2009 in Dubai. Mm -hmm. um, we came 13th out of the 16 teams, which wasn't bad at that time, especially considering the circumstances in Uganda. Yeah, many teams were not yeah. adopting ladies' teams at the point. Yeah. So as a player that has been through all these different stages of um, the growth of the game, from pretty much you have joined slightly after foundation of the game by the Helens, and then you maintained all the ladies' sport in existence because you were persistent even when the sport was trying so hard. You maintained all through this. You got to the international scene. Um, seeing where the ladies' sport is in Uganda today, how does this make you feel knowing that this is something you worked hard to contribute to and achieve? Um, how does this make you feel? It, it's, it's actually, I'm happy about it because, you know, if we didn't give up. Mm -hmm. We kept fighting and uh, playing and representing the nation when they needed us. Yeah. And then uh, now these young girls have actually come up and some of them we played with, some of them, I hope, learned some things from us. So where the sport is going right now, uh, the sevens, I'm happy about it. Uh, although I want, I would love to see even the 15s, uh, 15s ladies actually, and it also pick up. So I don't want us to focus on one um, style of play, just sevens, and let us, I want us to balance and have both, so that we both achieve and be successful in both sevens and 15s, because at the end of the day, you know, not everyone can play sevens. So we need to cater for who, all female rugby players get them involved and also them let them be part uh, of taking Uganda far in both uh, styles of play. So, uh, Charlotte, uh, <laughs> I think you have uh, rushed us somewhere yeah. when you went quickly over the 2009 escapades in Dubai. That was the first international yeah. women's World Cup for sevens and uh, it is worthy to note that Uganda was the first uh, the women's sevens were the first senior team to qualify for uh, an international World Cup, internationally recognized World Cup. Mm. Uh, the first was, of course, uh, the uh, cricket boys, but those were the under-19s. So uh, looking at that squad that represented us in that World Cup, you have players like Helen, of course. You have uh, Rosenberg, you have uh, Charlotte yourself. Uh, and other players like Rachel Kakairi. Now, some have taken the coaching route, others have taken the officiating yeah. route. Uh, Charlotte, what next when you're done with this whole active rugby thing? Well, I'm someone, I don't... <laughs> I had Roma somewhere. Charlotte said she's not planning to retire until Helen's <laughs> 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 She said until Helen's no. give up. <laughs> so, so, the thing is, mm. you know, because I feel even as I'm playing, playing I'm actually teaching these girls so much. Mm. And you know, I'm lucky, like, God has given me a chance that I can actually still play. Yeah. Um, and then, so right now, I want to just focus on the now. Of course, probably in the future, something can come up. Maybe, I don't know if I'll go into refing or coaching. That's not decided yet, because right now, I'm actually still coaching, actually. Mm -hmm. I play, but also help out with the coaching. Mm -hmm. So I'm still, like, learning and trying to figure out what's the next step. But why are you rushing me to retire? <laughs> yeah? Because uh, eh, eh, people so really want me to retire. Yes, we still need no. to hear. No, I think and, uh, sometimes looking. the pressure comes from the, the fact that we're seeing a lot of the people you played with have moved on to the next field. Well, so that's, we, yeah, mm. but that's their decision. I've, I've, that's their decision to make. But I feel even as a player, I'm contributing Very to much. like okay. these young girls because there's so much. Because now imagine if I retire and go refing, all that knowledge and what I can do, I've gone with it, I've kept it. Yeah. So because I can still play, I feel I need to uh, utilize and actually let these young girls learn as much as possible from me before I actually say, you know what, I'm done. And uh, they are learning so much from me as a player than they would have as a coach. Because I've done both and I've realized as a player, I'm actually teaching them more than as a coach. You can't, it's hard to express yourself as a coach. So when they see you do it on pitch and actually executing it, they're like, oh, actually, that's how it's done. 
And I think I can testify to that because one of my favorite players at the Black Pearls, that is uh, Bushia Namutebi. Okay. She's a girl that can pass both to the left and right, and yeah. not very many men yeah. can do that. Yeah. So yeah. I think she's learning hands-on from uh, players like Charlotte, who are still in uh, that system. Mm -hmm. Of course, uh, Susan Adonga, I saw her yeah. playing yeah. center last week. Yeah but she's a very good number eight. Yeah. yeah, so when you have those players in your team that keep on uh, leading from the front line, uh, I think that's uh, a very good way of yeah. contributing so to rugby. But, but I'll, of course, return at <laughs> some point. <laughs> but <laughs> but I, won't, I won't tell you, I won't say that I don't, I don't do that stuff of announcing I'm retiring. No, yeah, you I'll just... Less, eh? Yeah, you'll see me a lot less, and I'll be like, well, it's time I'm done. Yeah, but I still have, I think I still have a lot to offer to uh, women's so rugby. One, one last thing, uh, schools rugby is back, yeah. specifically for the, late, for the girls, sorry. Yeah, for the girls, it is back uh, in the Central League. Yeah. Uh, would you like to see schools like Vienna taking part in some of these uh, activities because there are schools like St. Peter's Nalia and uh, Light Academy who are not in the sense of its traditional schools, but they are now playing. Then you have the girls' schools also starting to play, but we need more schools like Vienna. Do you uh, think that's a place you can contribute? Uh, well, Vienna, Vienna would, yeah, yeah Vienna, Vienna can. can. Okay, before Vienna, it was just strictly boys, not girls. Mm -hmm. So I don't know how their attitude is right now about sports, because at that time they supported sports a lot. Because I've not had them like in any sporting um, activity, so I don't know what it's like in Vienna at the moment, because you know, with over the years, I haven't been there in mm. so many years. But of course, it's not about just Vienna. If we can have as many schools as possible, Vienna, we have, uh, even if you have schools from the elite schools, Namagunga, because there are some schools they support sports a lot, mm. Gaza, but hopefully, but I don't know. Hopefully it happens. Getting back away to the schools, Lake, and here in Bonio, you will yeah. not right after the break. I can stand it. Welcome back from that break. break. Um, with us in studio, the panel just got bigger. We now have an extra person with us who we are happy to have on set as we get into a bit of schools league. Ngarama Elvis. Yes, uh, thank you for having me. Yeah, Elvis Mwomuza. Okay, nice to have you with us. Um, we're talking slightly a bit to Charlotte about um, having more of um, more schools during schools league. Schools league. And um, Joseph was asking you, do, do you feel like this is an aspect you can contribute to? Because um, now that the ladies' league has grown more, it means there's a lot more games. Initially, you had about only three, te four teams, six uh, games. It actually it started. We'd have we had three. Then they grew to four. So the games were much less, yeah, which yeah. means that mm, the teams in their capacity yeah. were enough. But now that you have a lot more games. Mm. Um, happening during the league, mm. which means the team depth has to increase because now that means there's a lot more exposure to injury, mm. there is a lot more exposure to fatigue and whatnot. Yes. So um, in your capacity with the Black Pearls, is there um, chances that we see you now getting into schools to have um, impact in schools so as to feed the club over time? Yeah, um, that's one of the plans uh, as a club, uh, not just Black Pearls, but also at uh, in, uh, in the Black Pirates uh, management. That's the plan to go into schools, but especially uh, uh, school-going girls in the area, in Boyle because we have a couple. So that's the plan. We want to reach out in the different schools, especially the neighboring schools. Mm -hmm. So we hopefully that project will kick off, uh, and then we start and see how far it goes. Okay, now that we're speaking about um, the clubs, yeah. uh, Black Pulse has had such a role, yeah? They've just been beating every team you come across, eh? <laughs> Actually, they even beat yeah. the Nile Rapids with so much anger <laughs> as <laughs> if they were revenging yes. for something. We, we had to, we had to, because eh, that loss was really painful. It, 
it really pinched us and we're like, you know what, we had to go back to the drawing board and we're like, you know, sometimes it's also good to lose, to lose some games, I think, because you wake up and you realize, you know what, this is what we need to do. It shows you the mistakes you're making. Mm. So when we lost that game to Naira Rapids, we, 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 didn't, we didn't rest. Immediately the next week, we started uh, training and working on our mistakes. So by the time the league started, we were like, now we are ready for any team that comes to play against us. Ah, yeah. So um, how does it feel to be where you are? What is Black Pearl? What do you believe or feel Black Pearl is doing different from the other clubs in the league? Because first of all, you have had the <laughs> biggest winning margins from every other team that has played. I mean, of all the ladies' fixtures, you've had the biggest winning mm -hmm. margins. Um, all the top four point scorers of the league at the moment are Black Pals. What is the club doing differently? I think, uh, not to cut you short, no, I think you can answer that question with only two words, Emily Lekou. <laughs> <laughs> because what she did last weekend wasn't fair. It should not be allowed. It, it should not be done. It's a point that she should have just told me. Okay, that's enough. No. I, think, I think I'll <laughs> cut you short again. again. Mm. We know, we know our strengths and we know we create it. We create uh, the spaces for her because we know what she can do. So as a team, we create the space for her, she scores. So it's something we've worked on as a team. Everyone knows their role and what they need to do. And we execute it according. You fail to execute, we assure you, man, you have to do this, you have to do that's mm -hmm. your role. At the end of the day, because we want Emily and Nakato to score the tries. Of course, other people do we score, score, but at, at the end, end of the day, we know we, we have, have a weapon and we are utilizing it and taking advantage of our weapons. I think that's interesting mm. to hear that as a club you have um, built, a, as a team, you've built yes. a system yes. whereby it's, it's less about who scores the tries but more about everyone doing their role yes. to get whom mm. you know can score yes. the tries to yes. score yes. the tries. Yes. So it's not everyone trying to put in the points, yeah? No, mm. no, no, no. So we utilize our strengths actually. So uh, what would be your piece of advice to uh, all the other teams <laughs> in the league? How can they put up their socks? Ah, where can they, <laughs> why, where why can they shop their Emily in the Because right well, now, ah. the Black Pearls also have an Akato. Then there is a danger woman, should I say, or still a girl, who is going to be a problem in about five years. That is a Rebecca Kabajungu. Yeah. Uh, we saw her playing in uh, the sevens. Yes. Small girl yes. in Hatch. She's going yeah. to be something. Yeah. So basically, it's all, now all those are girls, the small girls, actually, who come from the area, actually. Mm -hmm. Rebecca and Liliana, one of the, the school girls we have from the area. And, and we're, we're trying, trying to build to more young girls, actually, mm -hmm. from the area. So, so it's also, so I think, part of, of as, as we train, train with them, we actually, actually that's the advantage of now having experienced people, players like me, of course. Mm. We learn how to, like, we, we help build this young talent and show them what they need to do. And then the other young girls around us, we teach them, you know what, this is what you can do, work with your team and bring out the best in each other. And when you work with people and bring out the best in each other, you achieve results. So, so the secret is going at the end of the day, eh? but at the end of the day, I'm mm. not giving the other teams any more ideas. What we give them, I give them ideas to beat up. Whatever is there, so that black mouth has to be studied. Yeah. yeah. So since so Charlotte can't give us uh, more advice, <laughs> maybe we could ask Elvis. Elvis is a closeted pirate. Pirates fan. <laughs> uh, last time he was on the show, we asked him whether he was a Pirates fan, and he said it very slowly in a low tone. Elvis, this time you can be proud. Uh, what is, uh, in what way is uh, Black, Pal uh, Black Pirates sorry, contributing to, uh, say, women's rugby in the sense that the, uh, there is the Black Pals within that same setup, and then uh, Black Pals is putting up the good results. What can other teams say, for example, Chad Blond, what can they do with the Thunderbirds and maybe uh, Legends, and what can they do with the Panthers then? I think, mm. I think I'll go with her advice. You shouldn't leave them mm. so that they don't want to be attacked. So mm. I'll go with her advice. Or, if they have money, they can come and steal money. <laughs> <laughs> <and shoot. laughs> or, if they can find their Helen and their Charlotte hey. and, and their Emily Lekuro or something. But also, mm. like, let's give credit to the coach. Mm. We have the, one of the best coaches, I think. Mm. And I think she's not given that much credit. So mm. I think also the coach contributes a lot because, you know, it takes time to, you have to go prepare the team, how you want it to play, coach young talent. Because actually, our pack, half mm. our pack actually are rookies in the fifth. Most of them are rookies in the 15th league. Mm. So, and imagine she was able to prepare and put a pack together to actually compete uh, mm. for this uh, league. So, so I think, I think it's also credit first goes to the coach. Um, so Something I saw. Last season when uh, Need arose, 
Uh, she had to go hands on herself. Uh, on that pitch, is yeah. healing, yeah, on pitch. After we lost our seven players, players. Yeah. yeah. Something mm. I saw somewhere recently was. Um, I think it was on Twitter where someone said that it's interesting what Helen has done with the Black Pals because she's the one coach who can get a player and transform the player into an animal in the sport in yeah. only six months. Yes. And I think that's very amazing. Yeah. But I also think there's a lot more credit that comes down to the senior players, mm -hmm. the likes of Charlotte, Susan, and Dog. It seems you girls are doing the most to support the coach, which is really beautiful and good to see at the club level. Um, We'd spoken slightly earlier on um, schools leagues coming on, and, and we'd, we'd spoken about um, increasing of the teams in participants of school league. Elvis, you could share with us more about what's happening in the schools league at the moment. I know the girls league is back, the, the boys, boys league, league is somewhere. Is somewhere. Mm. Yeah, um, maybe before I jump into the fixtures, maybe uh, advice you could give to other teams is, uh, like she said, Black Pal Black Pals is looking at uh, getting schools within. Boyogere and all. Maybe other teams could also look at the schools, the girls schools league and see how to nurture mm -hmm. the, the girls in the different schools. Yeah, then uh, yeah, for the schools league last weekend uh, we had a few fixtures going on where we had uh, group A, we had Makere College having uh, playing against Namiliango where Namiliango won 21-10 then we had London College playing uh, Hana Mixed, where it ended 26-0 uh, uh, for the under-20. Then for Group B, we had Budo playing uh, Spinner. Unfortunately, for Group B, we only had under-20. We didn't have the 15 and 17, because uh, the St. Peter's and Alien Light Academy couldn't field the two teams. So we had 67-3 uh, for Spinner, then 13-63 uh, for Smack. For the then uh, jumping to this weekend's fixtures, we have uh, Hannah playing Makere College, then at uh, Hannah Mixed, then London College playing Namiliango at uh, London College, then Light Academy playing St. Peter's Nalia. This game will be played at uh, Kings Park tomorrow at 10 a.m. because Light Academy can't host this weekend. Then we have uh, Smack versus Budo. That's for, the, that's for the boys. Then for the girls, we are starting with the Central League because the different regions couldn't, uh, the schools haven't yet started, where we have uh, Kitara SS versus uh, Lakeview at, in Kisuvi. Then we have Riverside versus Korolo High School at uh, Riverside. All those games will be taking place tomorrow for the, school, for the, girls, for the girls as well. I noticed with the girls' schools rugby, there's a lot more. Okay. Yeah, it's majorly in TV sides. Eh? So I'm hoping over the time we'll get to see Black Pals have fielding its uh, partner schools from Boyongerere and Chireka and the areas. Yeah. Actually, that's how I was going. I hope Black Pals, part of uh, the initiative they're having, I hope that involving the schools' rugby championship so that we have the management team, so that we have teams from. We have. The way the schools league is, where we have central, you have in different areas. Because now, like for the boys league, we have an interview school, smart going to Namiliango in Mukono. Hopefully, we could have the girls league as well, coming from Entebbe, going to the right way Gary to play. Then they meet up in uh, regionals and finally nationals. So, yeah, that mm -hmm. is actually very true. Um, for me, I'd say, Charlotte, first I'd like to ask you, seeing that there's a um, central league for the schools, mm -hmm. female schools that's going on, um, how does, how, what's your take on this for the growth of women's rugby in general? Um, Do you see opportunity for the player pool at club level growing over time? Um, yes, actually, it's, it's a good sign. Yes, there may be six teams, uh, schools, but I think you need to, of course, everything has to start somewhere. Mm. So when other schools see actually that they are, they are actually girls who actually play, then maybe it will also encourage other schools in different parts besides Entebbe. Because we actually have a player who from Kitara, but I think she finished uh, S4, she's in S4 back. So you see also we have a, tal a player from uh, Entebbe who plays with us, Black Pals. Um, but this is actually 
I'm, I'm, I'm excited to see there's actually central rugby schools for ladies. Most of the mm -hmm. time you hear boys school, yeah. boys schools, boys schools. And six teams for the first one, like that's... That's big. That's, yeah. that, that's a good sign. So I'm just happy and uh, especially it's 15s. I'll still, I'll keep, I'll keep talking about the 15s because... Uh, 15s, we need to grow the 15s uh, uh, rugby, women's rugby in Uganda too, because it also helps us with rankings mm. at the end of the day. And if you're ranked well, it in increases on funding for women's rugby. So we need to uh, also help, it will help contribute to the 15s uh, set up uh, women's rugby. Uh, Charlotte, speaking of the 15s, uh, obviously this weekend you're off, that's why you're able to join us on set. Uh, first of all, thank you very much time and uh, second of all you are given a chance which games will you be watching this weekend uh, that's in the women's league uh, in the women's league if I'm to watch uh, I think because uh, I think it will be she wolves because we've not played against them yet we're playing them next weekend so it would be she wolves against Thunderbirds to see unfortunately uh, I think Thunderbirds is going to Mbali mm. and I don't think they air them anywhere so you can't even go to watch so it, I would have loved to watch She Wolves uh, against Thunderbirds, so to see how She Wolves plays, but unfortunately, we'll see uh, next weekend from, we'll just work on our basics and structure and see from there. Charlotte, thank you so much for joining us on the show. We appreciate your time. Thank we you. are very honored that you took our time to um, celebrate Women's Month <laughs> on this episode with us. Thank you for having me. It was nice to hear what you have to say about the journey of women's history in Uganda and all of that. And we're really grateful to have had you. Thank um, you. We'll be getting into a break right after this. Can we can release Charlotte.